Everybody, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, appreciate uh, everyone's time. Welcome back to a uh, session after a very brief break um, in the news stories. Uh, I'm here to, to present you know, our legislative priorities for this year on Elvis's 79th birthday. <laughs> Representative Mayfield wanted me to mention that in case anybody was <laughs> curious. Um, our number one issue, of course, is, is Medicaid expansion. Uh, there's no issue that's before us that could be any more important. Uh, we came together in a bipartisan fashion uh, to try and lure Boeing here, um, obviously without success, but when you look at, at what we did on both sides of the aisle to bring that issue to the forefront in a short time and try to create jobs in this state, it shows that we can do it. We came together to try and create 8,500 jobs in this state. We did it in record time. There is no reason whatsoever that we cannot create 24,000 jobs in this state in the same manner. We've left 24,000 jobs on the table last year. We cannot afford to do it again. We support the governor's proposal to fully fund the foundation formula by 2017. It's been a long time coming and it's something that we've needed across the state. We talk a lot about education reform in this state. It's never about making sure that our schools and our higher education facilities are fully funded as they should be. That is one of our top goals for this year, is to support the governor's agenda. We support a responsible fix to the school transfer issue. Uh, everyone knows that that is a, a huge problem. We think there are absolutely responsible ways that we can work together to get this issue fixed. What we don't think is that we should be putting some of the majority's extreme school reform issues tied to that legislation. We need to fix what's going on right now and leave the crazy stuff to another day. Um, we also support a raising of the Missouri minimum wage. We think that that is important to, as we talk about job creation, to bring the people at the bottom of the social ladder to create a living wage so that they can provide for their families to begin to crawl out of property. And when you talk about the problems in some of our schools, what people never talk about is the problems at home, the problems of people trying to feed their families to make sure that there's a place for their kids to sleep at night and get them to school on time. You can't do that on our minimum wage now. Representative Rorta um, has a bill that he's working on to do that. We are going to present a bill to, found, uh, to um, implement the school transfer issue. Uh, Representative Carpenter is going to, has a bill that he's been working on the entire interim uh, to roll out our tax proposal not a tax proposal that will drive an $800 million hole in the state budget and one that will create tax breaks for the wealthiest corporations, but one that will give tax relief to 98% of Missourians and will be revenue neutral. We think that all of these things can't be accomplished in this session and there's no reason that we can't tackle these. Um, I do want to say that I was a little disappointed in the lack of bipartisan tone that came out of the speaker's um, announcement today on the floor on his priorities. Uh, we came together in December and look what we got done for the state. Maybe it didn't work out, but that's what the citizens of the state expect. They expect us to work past our differences and create jobs. Yes. The speaker said that we need new, fresh ideas None of those ideas were new. They were the same ones over and over again. All of the crazy stuff that was uh, brought to the floor last year, Sharia law, um, drones, all that stuff's been filed again. It's nothing new. There's no new ways to create jobs in this state. The speaker wants to talk about right to work. It's amazing then that Express Scripts is adding 1,500 jobs in St. Louis. 
that Boeing is adding several hundred jobs, Ford is adding um, a thousand jobs, General Motors is adding jobs. We've created 44,000 new jobs from January of 2013 to now. 44,000. Our unemployment rate, while at 6.1%, is still unacceptable. It has been below the national average for, I think, 51 consecutive months. We're doing something right. Right to work is not going to help anybody in the state except to lower wages for the people in Missouri. So my Assistant Minority Leader, Gail McCain-Betty, has uh, something to say, and then we'll take questions. Good afternoon. So as we go into the 2014 session, two of our top priorities will be Medicaid expansion and the school transfer law. The expansion of Medicaid represents the largest job creation bill that we have seen in generations, creating 24,000 jobs in the healthcare industry alone. Our tax dollars are already going out to other states. It's now time for us to bring our tax dollars back home. School transfers are bankrupting school districts in the St. Louis area, and the Kansas City School District is destined for that same fate. We must make, we must make common sense changes to our school transfer law. Our Missouri students are entitled to a quality education regardless of where they live. We won't improve our struggling districts by putting them in bankruptcy. We must be careful not to hurt the receiving districts. These districts should have the ability to set reasonable class limits to avoid overcrowding. We must act now. We cannot hold our children hostage to advance personal agendas. We have an obligation to Missourians to move forward without getting bogged down in unrelated issues and pushing personal agendas. One more thing, I did forget one of our proposals. I'm sorry, I had the page turned. Um, Representative McManus is uh, leading our effort on ethics reform this year. Uh, it is not the same bill that we proposed last year. It is a much stronger version, uh, one that we think is is desperately needed in this state. And he will be, he will be filing that probably either this week or the beginning of next week. So, questions? There is not an agreement between the governor and uh, legislature on a consensus revenue estimate, so a couple of questions there. Where does your party stand on how much the, uh, money the state should uh, plan on having next year? And does that play into where you hope to see money come to the foundation formula? Do you think there's more money there than can be pumped into that, or where is that going to come from? Well, first of all, I haven't seen the, uh, the governor's budget proposal, but I assume that that is where his uh, numbers are coming from. Uh, look, I think we know that the, the House is going to, the governor's going to start with his number, and the House Budget Committee will start with their number. You know, if, if they want to go ahead and start cutting money from education, from fully funding the foundation formula, um, and not trying to trust the governor's numbers, then that's up to them and they can be in that position to go ahead and cut things from education. So I, do I know which number is the absolute correct answer? I don't, and I don't think, I don't think that it's fair to say that either one, either one party does. But, so. From a um, position of minority with uh, 52 members, you can't force much um, in the House of Representatives. So you're going to have to rely on public pressure in some ways to put on the Republicans. What do you Well, first of all, I think that there's enough people within the majority party that would vote for Medicaid expansion if someone in the Speaker's office had the courage to let it come to the floor for a vote. How are we going to know if no one will bring it up for a vote? The Chamber of Commerce in Missouri, as well as numerous Chambers of Commerce across the state, have come out more strongly in favor of this. You know, they realize that this is a huge uh, job creation tool. Why is it that the majority only wants to listen to the business community when it suits their agenda? I don't think it's fair to say that they want to say that, okay, fine, we can't expand jobs in the state unless we do this. They've come out and said they think this is going to create 24,000 jobs. 
I mean, they agree with us. We're not always on the same page as the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, but chances are, you know, barring Well, what we have been doing is we've been going in the interim. We went around the state for quite a while. Uh, we went to different areas of the state, and we tried to inform the voters and the citizens that this is the right thing to do, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, and as you said, it's up to public pressure to get these guys to do what they think. So, maybe. Just a, a quick comment, too. I think as we start to see some of these hospitals start to close, I think uh, a lot of our counterparts are going to have to rethink uh, how they vote on this. For the first time in history, BJC has laid off employees. I mean, if that's not an eye awakener, I don't know what is. Where would you like to see the minimum wage increase to? Uh, what is your, what's, what's your proposal? Let Representative Ward, let, let Representative Ward answer that. Sir, Bill. <coughs> Thank you, Jake. Uh, well, first of all, it's great to be part of a team that is bringing common sense solutions to the table uh, instead of what we heard in a very red meat speech from the speaker today that uh, I think folks noticed that uh, his own caucus was not excited about. We saw nothing but unenthused golf claps uh, throughout the speaker's speech, and I think it's because it's an extreme speech uh, that offers no bipartisan attempt to work with the governor to pass important legislation. Uh, and I don't think that's reflective of the, the speaker's entire caucus. So to, to confirm what, uh, what my friend and leader said, I think we can advance issues like minimum wage. House Bill 1098 was filed in early December. It seeks to raise minimum wage to $8.25 per hour. Uh, for tipped employees, it, it raises their percentage of the minimum wage from 50% to 60%. It also uh, doubles the damages uh, for employees who were not uh, paid properly under the minimum wage statutes. So uh, it very closely mirrors the uh, petition initiative uh, that just fell a few signatures short of getting on the ballot in November 2012. And it's common sense legislation that I think uh, Missourians of every stripe can, can agree is good for our state and, and good for our economy. Do you keep the coal up? I'm keep the coal, yes. Last year, uh, Representative Barnes uh, worked on an alternate Medicaid proposal that would include uh, a smaller increase with some uh, market-based reforms mixed in, and he's been working on that over the uh, since the last session ended. Is that something right. that House Democrats could get behind? I'm absolutely willing to sit down with Representative Barnes and, and discuss proposals with him. I mean, the Speaker created special interim committees. So did the Senate. So tell me now why, after we have been working on this, the entire interim that all of a sudden it's just not going to be brought up. I mean, why did we waste all the taxpayers' dollars having these interim committees if they weren't going to do anything? And you know, the speaker said in his speech that he was tired of the governor picking winners and losers as he did in the Boeing proposal. Unless I'm mistaken, I could have swore the speaker voted for that proposal. So I'm confused on where he's going with that. A question for some of your, uh, maybe for some of your members of the sure. education committees, but on the transfer issue, if there comes up an opportunity to leverage that with some of the other issues that uh, Speaker Jones or the Republicans have been favorable for, are there any that you can see working with or using as leverage? Well, first of all, I don't feel that we should be leveraging the children of the state on anything. They should be our number one priority. And educating our children in the state should be our number one issue that we're addressing this session. Um, without that, everything else falls by the wayside. So no, I don't believe that our children should be wagered. And there were bills last year, I filed a bill, and, and several of us did, and we were told that unless the speaker's legislation was moved, ours wouldn't see the light of day, and it didn't. That's wrong. If we know something is going to provide good educational outcomes, that should be a priority. What would you like? Do you have a proposal on the transfer line in terms of what changes you, your caucus supports on, your, on that law? No, we don't, we don't have a, you know, we've looked at the proposal that's being brought forward in the Senate. Um, we think there's some good groundwork there. I think there's some changes that probably need to be, make, be made. But, um, I, and I'll let uh, Representative McNeil speak she's to the she's not here. Well, well, Representative McNeil does have, um, she's working on legislation, she's not present today. I think there's some common sense things that we can, we can start with. 
Like I think that it's I think that it's not out of the picture to say that the receiving districts can at least have some common sense way to set classroom sizes. Certainly I don't think that they should be able to lower them the way some of them have below the number of students that they already actually have in class. Uh, but I think that there's there should be some reasonable expectations to uh, take in mind classroom sizes in those proposals. And there's some other things that we can work on, but um, it's a tough issue, as everybody knows. So, sure. I think one other point to understand, it, it, it's worrisome to me that the speaker said that the transfer issue doesn't seem to be a priority for him. Back in St. Louis, we have students that already lost their teachers this year. They, When they return to school after the snowstorm, they are going to brand new schools. Their school has closed. I don't, I cannot understand how that's good um, educational policy for our children. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.